Hi. Max from Game Press. Hi, nice to meet you, Max. Yeah. So you to... Oh, yeah, go, go right into your right, question. Sure. So, you have quite a range of characters. Do you have any specific preference for the kind of character you play, you know, from like Big G to like... <laughs> um, I, I really like, I, I have a fondness for really hammy characters because they touch my heart so much. So, like, characters like Big G or Owain ha have always been... Uh, the fun is for me to play, uh, not mostly because it, it, it takes so little acting involved for those characters because I'm just kind of naturally a exuberant kind of guy. So it's always really fun to be able to go in and just have a really good time. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really like, um, I would like the kind of like stoic badass characters more, but I, I always feel there's there's a sort of weird disconnect between um, that archetype in like anime and American voice acting because the only archetype I, I, I can really think of for for that kind of character is Batman over here. So there's not like a huge range of what you can do with that kind of character, right? So mostly you just sit here and brood. <laughs> but but yeah, for for characters like Big G and and Owain, you're allowed to just kind of bust out whatever you want and have a ton of fun and yeah, that's if I have a preference, I would play those characters all day long. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, nice to officially meet you. <laughs> I wanted to ask, since the block has been around for you know, 20 plus years, what goes through your mind, especially knowing that your voice has been on, uh, whether it be a prominent role or not so prominent, but just the fact that you got to hear it on such an iconic uh, cartoon block? Yeah. Um, well, I have, I, I've been a Toonami watcher for decades now um i remember growing up watching it at home uh coming home from school and the first time i was ever on toonami it was just one of the greatest feelings of my life because it's you know you grow up enjoying something and then you get to be a part of it it's something that you you're going to carry with you for for the rest of your life you know um nostalgia is a powerful thing and being involved with your own nostalgia is something i can't even really describe with words uh it it it, it I, I was thrilled, thrilled to be able to be a part of anything on Toonami. I remember, you know, you know, school is hard for a lot of kids, and growing up is hard for a lot of kids, and you always had those cartoons to look forward to when you get home, you know? And I hope that I was able to help out some other kids, just, you know, even my tiny little way being on Toonami, I, I hope I gave someone something to look forward to the next day, and yeah, it's it's been a thrill. Yeah. So kind of, um, sort of the previous question asked. So you know, like characters are kind of different. Mm -hmm. you know, like like Archer from Kids Anime. Yeah. And also, I guess Martian. Well, I guess Martian is like happy. So how do you get into the mood for those sort of different characters? Uh, well, for Archer specifically, I I um. Uh, I was a fan of the Fate series beforehand, so I knew pretty much everything to know about the character. I played the visual novel, <laughs> you know, when I was younger. Um, so yeah, that dates me. But I, uh, for so for him specifically, I I, I came in with like um, cheaty knowledge uh, of the character. But for other characters, you know, um, it's always a mix of the director, the engineer, you. It's never just one person in the booth creating these characters. Um, like we'll throw ideas back and forth. It's like, oh, like let's say you're the director. I'll be like, oh, so I was thinking about this. Let's see what how that sounds like. Blah 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 blah. How did that sound? Do you think we should incorporate this? And then the director will come back with his notes. And at the end, that's how the character is formed. So uh, I and I love being able to um, pitch ideas back and forth. That's one of my favorite things about voiceover. You know, you never just sort of walked in the booth and do exactly what you're told all the time because. That's not what they hired you for, you know? But it's it's the collabor collaboration? Collaboration? <laughs> collaboration is not a word. Collaboration between uh, the three folks, the engineer, the director, and uh, the actor. That's that what that makes this job so exciting. Yeah. I wanted to ask about a recent anime mark that Toonami fans are starting to see with Hunter Hunter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We do definitely get to hear your Yes, that's true. How you felt when you saw the character, how you feel going in to record for the character. I I I had no idea what to expect because 
until I walked into the booth, I didn't know he was a koala. I straight up didn't know. All, all I knew was he was um, uh, he was a bad guy, and he was gonna have kind of like the dark, edgy kind of brooding thing. And I was like, okay, I'm guessing like a you know edgy looking like you know what. And then this koala in a suit walks up on screen, and I'm like. That's my boy right there. I loved it. Um, yeah, he was a great thrill to play, and I think he's still alive, right? He doesn't get no. I, maybe I. Yeah, I I don't know if he gets taken out, but we'll see. I don't want to spoil anything, but um, I, I I thought what a crazy unique character to 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 be able to play, and he probably is one of the more badass characters I've ever been able to voice. You know, this tiny koala is just messing people's lives up. Um, that was great fun. Um, I, I, uh, what's my call it? I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch it on Toonami now, but, um, it, I'm never really, I've never been really that successful in being able to catch my episodes. I rely on social media to be like, Hey, Hey, you're, you're on. I'll be like, oh, crap. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll find clips of it secondhand, but it, yeah, it was, what, what was his was his name is just Koala. I remember the name, but I do think they would probably call it like a play on with Koala. Yeah, I remember his name was just like Koala <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, I can't wait to see more from that guy if if he's able to come back. Yeah. So, um, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, <laughs> that's a crazy thing that happened. Yeah. So you know, there's like a lot of high expectations behind it and everything. So I was wondering, what was your kind of thoughts on this process, and what's the story behind getting Detective Pikachu to English localization? Well, I knew that Detective Pikachu was uh, was a thing way before I saw the audition because you know I'm I'm a nerd and I like to keep up with my video games. So, like everyone else, I was like, "Oh, Danny DeVito would be the perfect Detective Pikachu." Oh, I hope they get him. And of course, you know, they asked him about it, and he's like, "What's a Pokemon?" So that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, I, I got the audition, and um, I after nerding out for a little bit. I sent them a couple of takes. I sent them a take of him sounding uh, more closer to what I sound like naturally, and then I gave them the DeVito take. <laughs> and they ended up wanting the DeVito take real bad. Not because that they've been envisioning Danny DeVito, but they've always wanted Detective Pikachu to have this kind of s New Yorker street gritty tough thing going on, and you know, DeVito naturally sounds like that. Um, so it wasn't a choice to, it wasn't really based on the fact that fans wanted DeVito. It, it was based on the fact that Nintendo have always wanted that voice print um, for the character. So it was set in stone before the meme even happened. You know, um, so I know a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, they chose that kind of voice because you know the Danny DeVito meme." It was it was set in stone before that even happened, and um, it's 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 just the cutest game. I, I really like it. It's adorable. It's it's uh, for like little kids. It's they, they have great great little logic puzzles for you to go through. I mean, for like adults, it may be a little easy, right? But it's made for kids, and it's it's really darling, and it's got a lot of heart in it. And if you know, if you guys. If you guys want to have a really great, cute time, please pick it up. It's, it's, I think it's one of my more favorite things that I've done. That and I'm just a huge Pikachu fan, and he looks adorable in the little deer soccer hat. Um, yeah, Detective Pikachu is awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure if my uh, colleagues have asked about this, but I'm not sure if we've talked to you about Kill or Kill. I'm oh, sure. How do you feel, considering that it's still widely popular? I know uh, other uh, castmates that you have still get the "Don't Lose Your Weight." Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious how you feel just about that being a part of the project. Uh, how much it was well received by fans and stuff like that. How much you enjoyed uh, being able to be a part of it to showcase to all kinds of fans, including television. Right. I mean, I, I was, uh, before Kill a Kill, I was a huge fan of Gurren Lagan, And um, when I saw that there was another show uh, kind of stylized in that way, I, I was super excited. I watched the entire thing before I even realized that our the studio I work with is, was going to dub it. Because, um, huge anime fan. Um, and when I got Tsumogu, um, I had actually... I auditioned for Tsumogu and uh, the character Matt Mercer ended up booking, the glowing nipples man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I was, I, I didn't know if this show was gonna 
make it on Toonami only because it was so sort of like out there and so sort of like raunchy but not raunchy it was it's a lot of things this show right but it all sort of comes together at the end and I'm so glad that um, they picked it up it's it's one of the more spectacular shows that you'll see just visually right the music music is amazing the action scenes are amazing um, you know at first I was like wow this is a lot of fan service but it sort of explains and pulls it together which which I think is a great boon to the show um, it it, it emphasizes storytelling over you know the fan servicey parts and i and i thought what a what a great what a great um uh what's it called a um uh what a great follow up to Gurren Lagan right and i'm i can only hope that more shows come out as as over the top as extra <laughs> i'll wait for my next show i'll follow up okay all right all right <laughs> Yeah, it just got released. It, the DLC just came out for Fire Emblem uh, Warriors. Yeah. I'm super excited for that. So, like, they're wondering if you've had any recent work with Nintendo or just like other recent projects. I have. Unfortunately, I can't say anything. Uh, um, there, there, there's definitely something to look forward to, and um, you know, Fire Emblem is gonna is is a tremendous franchise, and I'm sure there's going to be more uh, stuff coming out in the future. Fingers crossed, more Owain soon for, you know, not only Fire Emblem uh, Heroes, but whatever other Fire Emblem they they choose to come out with. Uh, I I'd love to. I'd love to pitch this right now for any Fire Emblem fans. If you're playing Fire Emblem Warriors, the Awakening DLC has just dropped. So all these voiced cutscenes with Owain are out, and they're they're super cute and super great. Owain is, I I don't have like, a f if I had a favorite character, because I love all the characters I've been able to play, but Owain has a real special place in my heart. You know, I think we're just very close as people. So. You no, know, I love the dude. But yeah, I like you. I'm, I'm, I wait with bated breath for every sort of Fire Emblem game to come out, because yeah, I play through them all too. E. Oh really? <gasps> I've been meaning to watch Darling in the Franks for a while. I, I know almost nothing about it except that people love it. <laughs> and like obviously. Oh yeah, by the way, I meant it if you could say it. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, stuff like that, but since you're saying you like the visuals of, like, Kill a Kill, yeah. Darwin and Franks does look like it. It is, I think, oh. they have a little more fan service than... Okay, it's okay. It's in the sense of, like, the main characters are prepubescent. Oh, look. So they're, like, having that kind of couple. My thing is, if if you've been watching anime for a number of years, at some point you're gonna be like, you know, you, you barely see the fan service anymore. It's like, okay, here's the here's the fan service that must be in every show. Okay, let's get past. Okay, and like for example, Food Wars. Have you seen Food Wars? Dude, Food Wars is the best. Like, if you haven't seen Food Wars, please do yourself the favor. I know it's a little fan servicey in the beginning, but it turns it into this amazing shonen like uh, cooking battle show, and it's and and they teach you how to make the stuff they they, they uh, serve on the show. So it's like a great lesson in cooking, too. And the animation for the food porn is gorgeous. I can't get over how pretty it is. It's one of those shows that you can just have on in the background, right? And you turn around, and suddenly there's this beautiful pot roast, and you're like, eh, ah, right? It's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I definitely recommend Food Wars, and I will absolutely be watching Darley and the Franks. People have been requesting it for Toonami. Oh. I can't wait. Well, that's what I'm going to do when I go back home. Watch Starling and the Franks. Building on that, what are some anime that are currently undubbed that you would like to dub? Or like, that you'd like to see dubbed? Or... Um, let's see. Uh, they just announced uh, this cute show where there's a detective who's a butt. Um, he, I don't know if you've seen anything about this yet. Crunchyroll just sort of tweeted about it a little while ago. But he's just, he's this butt, right? And with a face. And he's got a detective hat on, and he solves mysteries. And it reminds me of Assy McGee from like that old time. Like, remember Assy McGee? It, it seems like a more PC version of that. So I would love to be able to be involved in that. And also, there is a uh, magical 
boy show coming out. Do you know the one I'm talking about? The uh, he's 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 got like this pink frilly thing on and. I, I don't know the title either, but that looks like a lot of fun. Um, there, there needs to be more magical boy shows. So if I can be involved in that, man, I want to have a magical girl transformation. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> so those are the two shows right now that I would, I would absolutely love to be in. I can't be in Food Wars because it's already dubbed. So it's the next best thing. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to ask is about uh, the Bang Zoom dub of Dragon Ball Super. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Tenma Tenma is not shutting Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anything's like been canned. You don't have to say anything about that. Aspect, mm -hmm. But I did want to know your thoughts about Harrison and Vegeta. Oh, I dude. Prince of all saying. Yes. The <laughs> legacy that another actor has had with the Funimation dub that's here in North America. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine the like how much you felt pressure. It was a lot. I mean, I know it's for, you know, a, a, a more remote audience in Southeast Asia, but just having to have the experience of walking to the booth, hearing the beeps count down, and you having to deliver the first line as Vegeta. For for anime fans, or at least for me, being a huge anime fan, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z were some of the first shows I've ever seen. So there's a there's a certain legacy to uphold for this character. And, you know, I, I feel like nowadays, having done this for 11 years, I don't really get nervous anymore starting to do a character. But for Vegeta, I absolutely was. I don't see how anyone couldn't be, you know. Um, it's Vegeta. And uh, it, it was one of the greatest, biggest wish fulfillment moments of my life. Um, it doesn't... I... I can only hope that, you know, there are some kids in Southeast Asia who saw it, who had a really great time, who was int maybe even introduced to the show, because this is a show that deserves to be in people's lives. It's 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 a classic, and Vegeta is such a classic character, and um, I had huge, great respect for him walking into the booth, um, and which made it ironically enough, much harder to voice the character because you start second guessing yourself. You're like, oh no, um, how do I, how would Vegeta go about this? How, you know, there's so much, there's a lot of pressure. This, this character has so much weight to him. Um, I feel like halfway through our season, the entire cast sort of um, uh, gelled and synced together with the characters. And I, I feel like our, 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 our latter half of the season was, was very, very good. It was just an amazing experience, you know. It was just such an amazing, it's something, an experience I'll never forget. You know, you know even if the Toonami Asia is canceled, I'll, I'll always have the memories of being able to voice Vegeta. Yeah, I know. There's a couple clips online, but yeah, I know what you're meaning. I wish there were DVDs. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. Um, well, I, uh, for Archer, there's always the good old, um, I am the bone of my sword. And um, for uh, Owain, oh, there's so many. <laughs> Owain oh, is just made up of catchphrases, right? So a lot of it is like, Radiant Dawn! Binding Blade! Shadow Dragon! And like an infinity of other things. Um, Vegeta. Gallic Gun! Final Flash! <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, wh wh <laughs> those are those are probably my favorites uh, to date. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that we were just talking about like you voicing Vegeta and the added pressures, there are other roles that uh, other people have voiced that you have then stepped up and mm. given your voice. Archer is one of them. Uh, guts and the new berserk. Yeah. And you say you don't necessarily feel pressure, but do you at least feel, I'm not, not so much uncomfortable, but just, oh, I'm doing something that people already know, how are they going to take me? Right, it's right. It's something that U.S. fans can see, unlike the journal suit. Right. Um, yeah, that's a great question, because like, I, I feel like every voice actor comes to that moment, right, where, where something that's been established is placed on them, and they have to step up. Um, I, I first had that experience with a game called Fist and North Star Ken's Rage, uh, where I had to play Kenshiro, right? And I was 
huge fan of Fist and North Star going in. So yeah, that that was my first experience of like, oh my God, how are they going to take it? Are people going to hate me? You know, um, fortunately, uh, I've had the luck to be able to be in that situation a number of times now, and it's gotten easier with each iteration. Uh, for Berserk, uh, you know, I was I had the um, I also knew basically everything about the character going in because of my huge nerdy fan. Uh, so that was that was uh, not as difficult as um, maybe stepping into Archer for the first time. When I booked Archer for the first time, I freaked out. Like, straight up freaked out because I was like, oh, oh no, Liam O'Brien, but he was so good. Um, and, you know, the first few episodes of uh, Fate Unlimited Blade Works, the director and I really had to crunch down and be like, okay, we need to we need to come up with something that's not Liam because we can't really replicate Liam's performance for the show. Um, and it's, it's just sort of working through the steps like that that calms your nerves because at some point you have to trust in yourself as, as a performer, trust in your director to know that they have your best interest at heart and they care about the product. And once you're in there doing the work, I feel like you know, a lot of that nervousness fades away until, of course, it comes out, and then you're like, oh, was I trash? We'll see. Um, but I think Vegeta has been probably the most nervous I've ever been doing a character, only because of how I feel about, you know, the character itself. And I, I've been very lucky to be able to play these characters. Um, it... But yeah, I, uh, for the, the nervousness thing, um, it's just a matter of being able to do it over and over again. Your brain can adapt to so much, you know, so even if it's an, a very established character, you already have uh, a game plan going in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, at first, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I can imagine with the Berserk one, too. Oh, dude, yeah. Like, it was so good, dude. If you, if you guys haven't seen the original Berserk, please do. And if you're young... Have a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> All right.